Good afternoon and welcome to the Kerry Garden Show. Alan Finn checking back in with you here at Boyles of Calorglan, where it's bursting with colour. I've got some beautiful dailies in my hand. I've got some osteosperms in front of me. And now I just would like to know how the best way to plant them. And I know just the person who can help me. I'm gonna go find Jur. So now we're over here with Jur. This week we're starting off with a little bit of demonstrations. Jur, how are we doing? Good, good. Glad I can't complain. You've Spent, got the you've got, color. Plenty of color. You've got the gloves on, so it means we're getting oh, down we're, and dirty. We're getting down to business. Great, great. So yeah, this week we're gonna start with a bit of a demonstration from Jur, and then Trish will be joining us later in the show to talk about bedding. So right now, Jur, tell me what we've got, and of course our listeners on radio, what we've got in front of you here. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll do up a, a nice little pot here. We'll just go through how the whole process works mm -hmm. um, and what you can do with a pot. Like we're going to start off with a, with a standard and how to dress up uh, the standard underneath. So what I mean by a standard is it's on a stem. Um, the one that I have here is, um, is about uh, a foot, a foot high um, and it has a nice big head. Uh, beautiful, are, beautiful red and yellow flower on it as well. They're too. lovely and they come in whites and they come in yellows and they come in pinks. And what, what's it called? Uh, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum, okay. Yeah, yeah so they're, they're, they're brilliant. They flower right up till September. And also, like we have different diff, uh, different plants that we could put in, the likes of the fuchsia. And again, we can dress up the, the fuchsia underneath. Yeah, so you have um, a pink fuchsia there in your head. I've also got fuchsia. a red one here as well we can uh, we can show. So these are very, very, very popular they are plants. They're very, very nice. And, they, and, and again, they flower right through the summer. And again, with the, I know we, we were talking about bees last week and the fuchsia is another one there that's, uh, that's brilliant for the bees again. Great. Um, so what we do first is every plant likes uh, good drainage. Um, I know that we're coming into the summer and you know we're going to be expecting some hopefully, fine, good, good, hopefully. good weather for the, for the whole summer yeah. but unfortunately we live in a, in a country where we are going to get rain so um, drainage is, 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 uh, a big is key. Um, and would it be a big mistake I think a lot of people would make is not put, not think of putting a bit of everyone, stone at the bottom. Everyone makes a mistake in not putting in the stone. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's the most common mistake uh, people yeah. make and especially if, you, if you're, you're planting something over the winter as well. Um, drainage is the most important okay and with drainage as well if let's say you have a nice um a nice patio area uh, and you just put the the compost straight in okay it's going to flow out it's the bottom flow out. so this is going to filter the water through as well okay so it's not going to stain your patio great well that's um, a big i think that's a big plus for so people you want a, a good fine fine graded stone um sometimes some people use styrofoam you know okay uh, the, the pots, if you crush up the pots, you can put them at the base as well. Okay. Just anything, anything just to, to allow the water to move freely. But what I, what I might suggest is the next time you go to the beach, maybe just grab some of the small stones off that, put oh, them yeah. in the... Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what Kerry County Council is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I'm not telling you to take a bucket or a, or, or a ton of it. Yeah, like, yeah, but, yeah. Sure but listen, um, even decorative like stone, stone. Um, a bit of gravel. Uh, we sell, you know, most garden centre, they sell the, the potting grip. as well. Um, so, literally, you want two or three inches in the bottom of it. Okay. So I the that whole is lot the of sound it of it going into the pot. How big is the pot here, Jerry? You have the the pot is about two foot high uh, and it's about foot and a half in diameter. Okay. So it's a, it's a it's a nice sized pot. So it'd be beautiful, kind of out. They could be either side of the front door. They could be just out the back door. The yeah, yeah. Either either are yeah. Or um, a nice and feature. if you if you're in a wet if you if if your garden's very very wet uh, and you want to plant something like this into the garden, um, just get your grit again. Dig mm -hmm. a big hole put the grit in the bottom of it, a yeah. bit of compost and, and, and plant away. Okay. It'll just help with the drainage. Great. So you can see there, I have about two to three inches uh, of stone in the, in the bottom. Also, when you're planting, you want a, a, good, um, a, a good compost. Yeah. So the one that we, every, everything that we plant here John is Inns. done in the John Inns. John Inns. Um, it, is, man. it is a brilliant, brilliant compost. Okay. Um, like it's good, it's easy to work for it. You can see there now, it's, it's it's, it's, it's a it lovely retains, rich it retains dark moisture color. as well. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a good one. It's quite dense. Like if you're doing seedlings now, we'd recommend the Jack's Magic because it's a little bit finer for the seed. Okay. Uh, but for your baskets, for your containers, window boxes, pots, John Ines is, the, is definitely the one to have. So I'll fill this out right up to the top there now. So we don't want to go all the way to the, all the way to the, top because we don't only end up taking out a bit we can always add in more after uh, so there we just have so to so you've gone about about two inches from the top jar really is yeah, what you're yeah, kind of looking to make, at just to make space for the for the plant okay um good next feed, in good feed is very important as well so 
Here we have, um, this it's is a general uh, all purpose, it's a six month feed. Um, and it's slow release, so it's going to keep the plant healthy for the, for, for the next six months. And that's we, we've come across this a, a few shows whenever we've been talking about potting plants. The slow release is key. It's key, yeah, yeah, yeah everything. Like you, you will be putting on your tomato uh, food as well. Um, but every, this is just to weeks, give it a good base. But this is to give it a good base. Great. So we give it a good, good handful. That's two, two handfuls. handfuls. There. You can be generous. Um, it's not going to affect the plant. Okay. Also. Um, because it, just in case we do get a, a good a good dry spell, yeah. And if you don't want to be out watering um, every evening, it's just uh, give it a slow. Um, it's a stay wet gel. Okay. So last week um, when we were talking about bedding with Trish, she did actually say this. So it's a little gel that kind of absorbs the water and yeah. holds it a little bit longer. It, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Another mistake a lot of people make is they put in half the tub. Oh, too much, no. Okay. It's You've literally, literally just got a pinch. Just a pinch of salt, like okay. you're putting it on the dinner. Um, so you're like your man who's uh, who's doing the steak. That's it. <laughs> salt <laughs> yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, the fancy way. Because um, this does swell up. Okay. Uh, so one crystal will will nearly form a fingernail. Okay, yeah, right. So you're looking at So they quite do expand, so don't um, put in too much of that. Don't put in too much. Okay. And when you, that's all done then, it's just to give it a good mix. He's getting stuck in here now, everybody, and he's mixing it all around with his hands, which is, uh, is very again, important. And again, just bring it, make your little, bring it out to the, to the end of the so lid. So he's making a little hole then and in then the middle. Just, usually, we just give it a tap. Just when you're planting as well, just make sure that when you're taking it out of the pot, sometimes uh, the roots will come out the end. So if you just get a knife or a scissors or just, just pull it. So the and bottom of the pot, uh, again, just to our listeners, um, you're just making sure that there's no roots yeah, or it stems just makes, have come out. It makes it easier, cleaner, to, uh, it makes it easier to take the pot off. Yeah. So literally all that I'll have to do there now is... A little pop. Oh. Just pop it down like that. Great stuff. The root systems are just coming there. You don't want something that's finely, finely rooted. Okay. And you can see there now, I was just a little, a little bit too, bit too much, much compost. Okay, so he's taking a bit out. Now, just and letting just heal it, down. it in well, make sure it's straight, and then just firm it in with your fingers on either side. Okay, so he's going all around it with his fingers. We'll put in a little bit of compost in again over it. Okay, super. And then we'll dress it up. So when we mean about dressing it up, we, um, because it's on a, on a standard that all the flour is, is on the high part. So we top. can, we can yeah. put in, these are osteosperinums. Brilliant diesel flower right up to Love October. Love the osteosperdoms. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do two colours. Pink and white going all around the edges. And again, we do uh, encourage everybody to go on to YouTube or to uh, our Facebook page and watch this. You'll be able to see the beautiful colour and see everything. So you can see here now, Alan, There's this, a is, lot of this, roots is, this there. is well rooted. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to pinch, it. pinch out all the roots there. Give it a good squeeze. Even if you lose a couple of roots, the plant isn't going to die. It's okay. only going to do it good. Yeah. And what that's going to do when the plant, when that goes into the, the pot here, mm -hmm. the roots are going to just go this way. They're not going to go down. They'll okay. kind of, they'll Side spread is. and they'll root better. Yeah. So what I want to do there now is I'm going to leave room. So I'm going to plant the, the two whites in one straight line. Okay. The pinks in another straight line. So we're getting and then I'll be able to fill in with um with, with more bedding on the yeah. outside. So that's four osteosperms, uh, two purple across from each other and two white across from each other, just in a kind of an X. Yeah, so they're just some bit of a team. Um, Beautiful. And people shouldn't be afraid either. So it's, um, you can experiment. Okay. And it's um, it's, it's very I'll, simple. I'll get stuck in here, Jaron, I'll, I'll help. <laughs> So just, just to fill it in then, you can put in your trailing petunias, um, your geraniums, mm -hmm. you can do anything, but I, I'm keeping everything up right here. Okay. So I'm just going to put in a couple of busy lizzies, just a, a multicolor. Lovely. There's some reds, pinks and white. And this is um, going to flower right up to hopefully September into October. Wow. That is, that's the, going to be some centerpiece, Jar. If the weather is good in October, we might get November. Get an, ex <laughs> an extra month out of it. Okay, beautiful. So we've got whites, we've got purples, we've got reds, pinks, and then the beautiful um, chrysanthemum in the middle, which is red and yellow. That yeah. is stunning, Jer. So you just give this a good water after, after you plant it. Um, once a week then, I definitely recommend doing it once a week, is to just deadhead. I know we say it every week, yeah. but it just keeps the, it keeps the, the plant uh, healthy. Um, it keeps them looking good and it keeps the flower coming on them as well. And the chrysanthemum and the osteosperum, they constantly keep flowering, yeah. so it's, it's good. It, it's good to just, uh, just keep deadheading. Like Brilliant. we just broke a little flower there. Yeah. Uh, so when you're, when you're deadheading it, go right down in, back into the plant and pull it out. So Excellent. you're getting a, a good part of the, 
the stem as well. Excellent, yeah. And that'll help and, the uh, it's, a, it's as simple as that, Alan. It looks beautiful, I have to say, Ger. That is absolutely stunning. Uh, we'll, we'll put a few pictures up on, on Facebook as well, too. That's great. Thank you for the demonstration. And uh, we're going to get Trish in. We're going to clear the decks and we'll get Trish in to talk a little bit more about bedding. Right, so now we have been joined by Trish. How are you doing, Trish? Very good. Great stuff, and we have got lots of color. We have. Lots of color. Jared did, did a great demonstration about uh, about planting the pots and stuff. You're gonna talk a, bit, a little bit more about bedding because that's it's the ideal time We're for in it. the midst of the summer now, and the midst of bedding, and people just want to know, what do we plant? Is it still okay to plant? It definitely is okay to plant now. You can get out in your garden. Uh, we touched on it a little bit there a couple of weeks ago if you were preparing beds just to fork them up kill off the grass beforehand fork mm -hmm. it up apply your slow release fertilizer and plant and plant in mass colors of either one or two colors together or just all the one variety so say for example you were planting these are antirhinums or snapdragons is a common Snap name dragons, okay. these are lovely now i know we were talking about bees last week again now these are another one that the bees love brilliant um, they come even though i'd say one color they come in the pinks they come in the yellows and they come in the reds but they're all the one type of plant okay so they actually would be fabulous together and they're actually quite hardy okay now these ones if you had a bed the height of them will grow to about 12 inches high so they do go quite tall but they're quite sturdy mm. but when they're young you're better off to pinch out the top of it so and that actually makes the plant nice and bushy okay so people on facebook will see me doing it you just pinch out the tip of it or if you come into the garden center we can show you how to do it anyway mm -hmm. and that just makes the plant nice and bushy okay so you just great. tip along so with that then because you've got a mixture of color as in your pinks and purples and yellows and if you want to border it around it just go with a plain simple white allison the allisons are very popular they're fantastic so popular, now these they? are low so they only grow a couple of inches high yeah and you could put them around the border of it and it'll make the bed nice and formal looking then as well yeah now when you're doing the beds edge off the beds neatly as well just don't dig an area and plop down the bedding plants or whatever edge it off nice and neat because bedding plants are quite formal looking okay so you kind of want to finish it off make it neat you can get lawn edgers and you can edge down your lawn all around mm -hmm. and it'll be absolutely fabulous wow okay um, another nice thing as well is your geraniums now a lot of people use these in pots but a bed full of these would be fabulous as well. And it's beautiful, I actually saw, just as coming into the garden, there's some beautiful oranges, whites, there's oranges, there's reds. There's pinks, they're lovely pinks. and extremely hardy then as well. Beautiful. Uh, they love the sunshine, light shade as well would be okay, but the sun okay. would be for it. Um, again, a bed of them bordered around by your Alison and Lobelia would be lovely. Excellent. Um, if you're a bit on the exposed side and um, you're looking for something hardy or if you're doing up graves, pots and graves, the begonias. Okay. Begonias. Now, these are fantastic for flowering. Uh, they'll flower right from now up until, if the weather allows in the autumn time, till November, December. They're very, very hardy. Grow to about six inches high. Mm -hmm. And as you can see now, the foliage you have there, Alan, in your hand is a red foliage with a red flower. Yeah. And what I have here is a green foliage with a, a pink, pink flower. flower yeah and this is bronze leaf red a bronze leaf red Beautiful. and you can also get the trays in mixed colors then as well okay. but very very hardy and they will do in a shady area as in well in a shady area a shady well that's good area it's important well. to, to, yeah. to keep that in mind as well and you also have the fuchsia now the now, fuchsia little baby one because we had we had a bit we showed the big ones earlier on that's which right Ger had the standard one so this is the little bush one again now these can be planted into pots into window boxes and they'll only grow to about 10 12 inches high bush out the same flower um, all summer then up until the autumn time as well and they come in a different range of colors as well mm -hmm. now these uh, big pink and white ones here oh, that we've got on the table what are they? they they're dahlias is the name of them oh and dahlias you can oh even God. see like the instant color from them straight away yeah is absolutely fabulous and as i was saying a couple of weeks ago to you alan does the white look lovely it does it looks you know beautiful. we all have the pinks and the purples and the reds here but yeah sometimes the white just stands and last out. week it was all purple it was it was all purple <laughs> last week with the bees so, the white but yeah. uh, these are great again beautiful. a full bed of these whether it's all the pinks there's a deeper purple of that you can have the purple in the middle and the pink around it would be absolutely fabulous then okay. as well excellent excellent and we have of course our osteos they're there yes, the osteos, the osteos are, fantastic are there as well and uh, they give all look a great color i know jordan up the posh now and he's surrounded them with osteos yeah. it's just instant like if you have an occasion coming up 
that you want something for in a pot outside, you want instant colour because if you put in your antirrhinans, you will have to wait a couple of weeks for them to come into flower. Okay. But whereas if you're osteos, they're instant. Straight they're away. There. Straight yeah. away. I've got a beautiful one here now as well too, just to finish up. Yeah, this is... it's kind of a leucanthemum or it's like a chrysanthemum really. It's a daisy type flower. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of a very pale yellow. Now this is a perennial that comes back every year. Oh great. So this dies down in the winter and, and comes, comes back. back. Whereas the bedding plants we've just been talking about, they're they only for the summer for the long. Summer. So they last, but the only thing is with summer bedding is that they just give that spurt of colour around the garden. First, yeah. yeah. As you said there a few weeks back, they put all their energy into just they that. They do, yeah. So feeding then, I guess uh, finishing up, uh, Trish, would be the tomato, tomato food again. Tomato food. In order to get the flowers looking so well, mm -hmm. you do have to feed them. Now, when you're feeding them, you feed them about every two weeks with tomato food. But like as we always say, never feed on dry plants or dry pots or window boxes. So, so go water first. Yeah. and then come back in about two to three hours time and feed and feed and yeah. go by the recommendation on the back of the bottle don't be thinking the plant is not flowering great mm -hmm. i put in an extra capful mm -hmm. or anything because no. that will actually burn them and again time of the day you do it as time well of the too day, early morning, morning late in the evening. evening don't do it in direct sunlight, direct sunlight. brilliant yeah. excellent well that's fantastic beautiful color here great demonstration from jur as well too trish thanks so much for everything and of course thank you very much to jur for all his great demonstrations which you can see on our facebook page uh, if you're not already watching us, you should be. Uh, also catch us on YouTube. For myself, Alan, Trish, and Jaron, everyone here in Kilorglan, until next week, happy gardening.